hello and welcome i am creating this video for complete beginners who want to get started with vagrant and also for people who have some knowledge of vagrant so this video you can take as a quick refresher for you for uh, getting all the frequently asked questions and also if you want to prepare for any interviews for vagrant you can take this as interview questions for vagrant so let's start from very basics what is vagrant so vagrant is a open source tool it's free and open source and it can be used for configuring and managing virtual machines so with vagrant you can give the configuration of one or multiple virtual machines in a file called vagrant file and using that you can set up multiple virtual machines and then using the vagrant commands we can also manage these virtual machines what is a virtual machine so a virtual machine or vm is a software based computer so as we say it is virtual so it is not a real machine but a virtual machine and it runs inside another computer that we call as the host machine so the computer where we create virtual machine is called as the host machine and then virtual machine can also be called as the guest machine what is vagrant file so vagrant file is a configuration file in vagrant written in Ruby and it has all the settings and configuration for the virtual machine and to create vagrant file we use the command vagrant init and we can also use vagrant init with the name of the virtual machine or the box so it will uh, create the details of that particular virtual machine within the vagrant file what virtual machine providers or virtualization providers does vagrant support so vagrant comes with out of box direct support for uh, some vm providers like virtualbox vmware hyper-v docker but then there are other providers as well that we can use with vagrant so we need a provider for virtual machines where uh, we have all the virtual machines or from where we can get virtual machines and then using vagrant we can create and manage those virtual machines on a system next how to check if vagrant file is a valid file and for that we can use the command vagrant validate so if i just show you if i go to any of my vagrant projects so you can see we have this vagrant file and if i open my terminal and go to the location of this folder where i have my vagrant file so i will say cd desktop projects i am pressing tab to autocomplete and vagrant projects if I say ls you can see this is my vagrant file here and I will say vagrant validate and this will check and tell if it is a valid vagrant file or not if there are any errors any issues syntax errors or any other things it will tell you that uh, that it is not a valid syntax or valid file and all will also tell you the details what is missing or what is wrong so after creating a vagrant file always run this command then how do i start a virtual machine using vagrant for that we use the command vagrant up and we have to run this command in the directory or folder which contains the vagrant file okay so this is important this commands vagrant commands most of the vagrant commands will only work in the directory where we have the vagrant file there are some global commands as well but most of these commands will run from the folder having the vagrant file how do i access a virtual machine's shell or how do we connect to the virtual machine so after the virtual machine is up and running you can check using the command vagrant status after you say vagrant up you can say vagrant status and check if the virtual machine is up and running and then using vagrant ssh we can go inside the virtual machine so in this particular environment this is the machine which is as of now off i can try to look into a different environment and the vagrant environment means wherever uh, you have a folder where you have a vagrant file can be considered as a vagrant environment and we can have multiple vagrant environments on the system so let me just go to a folder called this is i will check the name ansible project demo i was creating this for uh, the ansible demo so do not worry it is still we are 
discussing about vagrant and here I have uh, this folder ansible hosts and here I have a vagrant file so here I think my some of my machines are running if I say vagrant status it will show me if any machine is up and running here and yes you can see these two machines are running so if I have to go inside these machines I can just say vagrant ssh and if it is a single or default machine it will just go inside that machine if there are multiple machines I can also give the name of the machine like this web or db and if you just want to see how I have given these names so here if I go inside and open this vagrant file I will open it in some better editor so that you can see the contents properly uh, let me use vs code you can open in a text pad notepad as well all right yeah so here you can see this is how we have given the configuration so this is a centos system and then we have said config.vm.define and here we can give the name and the host name so these are two machines so when we give the name and host name like this we can then use these names in our vagrant commands all right so to stop a virtual machine we use the command vagrant halt and this will gracefully shut down the virtual machine we also have a command vagrant reload that will restart the virtual machine it will first say vagrant halt and then it will make the machine up and will restart the machine how do we destroy the virtual machine for that we use the command vagrant destroy again we have to run all these commands in the folder containing the vagrant file and destroy will completely remove the virtual machine from your system all its directory all its folders everything so whenever you do not or uh, you want to remove a virtual machine completely from the system you can use the command vagrant destroy it will also save you some space so the virtual machines take the space of your host system so you can destroy the virtual machines once you have done with your work and you do not no, you do no longer require that machine so how do we list all the running virtual machines we can use the command vagrant status or vagrant global status now here is the difference I can run the command uh, vagrant status so I have so shown you here I can run the command vagrant status and this command will only work in the vagrant environment or the folder where we have the vagrant file so this is running fine but if I go out to a folder where we do not have any vagrant file if I run this command vagrant status let us see what happens so it says a vagrant environment or target machine is required so there is no vagrant environment here or no vagrant file so it is not running but we can run a command called vagrant global status from anywhere if vagrant is installed on your system so you can see it will give us all the machine details that are running on this host system we have the id of the machine the name of the machine the provider the state so you can see this one is power off these four are running in the directory so this is the directory of the vagrant file okay so this command you can run from anywhere also uh, we can also say vagrant hyphen v to see the version of vagrant from anywhere on your system so once vagrant is installed you can run vagrant v and vagrant global status from anywhere but most of these commands that manage the virtual machines have to be run from the vagrant environment or the folder where you have the vagrant file so the vagrant environment is a folder having vagrant file can be considered so one folder having a, a folder having a vagrant file can be considered a vagrant environment and we can have multiple vagrant environments on our system so these are the basic questions if you want you can take a screenshot of this screen and keep it handy with you now let us go to some more questions what do you mean by provisioning a virtual machine so provisioning a virtual machine in very simple words is making the virtual machine ready for your project and this can include several things like installing software updating software configuring resources setting up networks etc so whatever you have to do 
to make the machine ready for your task or project is called as provisioning of the virtual machine and uh, we have seen this in our examples so if i again go to some vagrant project and let me open this vagrant file and show you so here you can see so you can see in this vagrant file we use this config.vm.provision to provide provisioners and here we are using shell as the provisioner and here we have used the scripts within the vagrant file that is inline so here we are installing and uh, installing all these things but we can also use a separate file and provide the path of the file in the vagrant file so let me show you this as well yes this is an example you can see in this vagrant file we are saying config.vm.provision and the provisioner is shell we are using shell script and our shell script is in this file provision1.sh and you can give a complete location or if the file is in the same folder as the vagrant file we can just give the name so if I show you this file provision.sh this is the file so if I open it here you can see this is the provisioning file where we are uh, installing Apache web server on the virtual machine we are starting it and we are making it ready so similarly whatever you want to do to make the virtual machine ready for project is called as provisioning of the virtual machine how do we share folders between host and guest now by default the folder where you have your vagrant file in the host machine is shared to a folder called vagrant on the virtual machine this happens by default even if you do not provide any configuration but if you want you can add this in the vagrant file config.vm.sync folder and you can give the path of the folder on the host machine and the path on the of the folder on the guest machine or the vm so this will get synced and you can then share the resources using this folder what are vagrant plugins so plugins are add-ons that provide some extra functionality or features and in vagrant also we have multiple plugins uh, we can use the command vagrant plugin install to install any plugin and also uh, we have discussed this in our sessions whenever you want to uh, see the details of any command or what are the sub commands what are what all i can do with the command you can say let's say vagrant uh, if i have to see details about vagrant plugin command i will say vagrant plugin hyphen hyphen help so you can use the option hyphen hyphen help with any command and this will show you the options you can use with the command so you can see with vagrant plugin i can use va list vagrant plugin list vagrant plugin uh, repair vagrant plugin expunge vagrant plugin install all this i can say so if i say vagrant plugin list it will show all the plugins available that i have installed earlier so you can see these two plugins are available and then we can use vagrant plugin install with the plugin name to install the plugin and i have already shown you in the sessions uh, if you search for vagrant plugins list you will get a page where you can see all the plugins available for vagrant okay so you can get it from here then uh, how do we uh, what's a snapshot so this question is wrong it is what is a snapshot so please make it right so snapshot is a complete copy of the virtual machine in its current state that means everything that the virtual machine is or has for example its hardware software configurations uh, all the applications it has packages memory etc its current state a copy of its current state is called as a snapshot and what's the purpose of the snapshots so we take the snapshots of the virtual machine at a specific point in time so that in future if you want to restore our virtual machine to that particular time or to that particular state we can use that snapshot so we can use snapshot for restoring the virtual machines and to create a snapshot we use vagrant snapshot save and give a name to the snapshot and again you can just say vagrant snapshot hyphen hyphen help to see all the sub commands 
for this command so you can say vagrant snapshot uh, list save delete etc so if i say vagrant snapshot list it will show me list of snapshots i have already added on my system as of now there are no snapshots available in this particular vagrant environment so to restore it uh, once you have taken a snapshot to restore at any time in future you just use the command vagrant snapshot restore along with the name of the snapshot what's the difference between a public and a private network in vagrant so a private network uh, once you set up a private networks then using that network your uh, virtual machine will be accessible by your host machine a private network is only accessible from the host machine and other virtual machines of that network or that environment however if you set up a public network then your virtual machine can be accessible from anywhere outside in that network so if i show you uh, here let me see if i have an example yes you can see uh, this is port forwarding but then we can also set up networks public and private networks so in one of the files yes you can see here we have set up pr private network with this ip similarly we can also set a public network how to access an application or server running in a virtual machine from the host machine for this we do port forwarding and here you can see we use this config.vm.network forward port and we say guest the port that is used in the virtual machine and what is the port it will be forwarded to on the host machine so this means if there is any application or server running on port 80 of the virtual machine we can access it from the host machine using port 8080 all right and you can also see this is how we have used it here and we can also say auto correct true that means just in case port 8080 is not available or busy with some other application it will auto correct and there is a default range but if we want we can also give our own range so if we have to auto correct we can use any port between these this range 8000 to 9000 all right and how do you configure a virtual machines hardware settings in vagrant so again we use the vagrant file and in the vagrant file we can set the hardware configuration and the software configuration so let me show you some vagrant file where i have this configuration done or let me see this one i think i should be having here yes this one should have that configuration and yes you can see here we can set the operating system we want we can set the memory or the hard disk size we can also set how many processors or cpu we want so we can set up all this hardware configuration in the vagrant file and then vagrant will uh, bring up the machine create the machine along with that particular configuration so again if you want you can take a snapshot of this screen and keep it handy with you and read it multiple times i hope this all was very useful if you have any questions you can let me know i will see you soon thank you for watching and never stop learning